You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. I'm back. Rodrance for Black and White Sports. Sometimes I truly believe that karma is a real thing. And with all of the social justice narratives and all the shilling for the SJWs and the wokeness going on involving race with the NFL, they may have left themselves severely exposed because it's starting to look like they may be protecting Deshaun Watson. I'll just only give you, a, I'll let you guess as to why that could be. Although I've got, I've got my thoughts on that. Okay. Uh, now it should be noted. Deshaun Watson is under investigation over, over 20 women, over 20, 20 women involving what can only be described as potentially repugnant acts involving massages. Okay. That escalated. All right. And, uh, he's under investigation. He's been dropped, relegated, as they say, down the fourth string for the Houston Texans. He's never going to play another down for the Texans. John McClain of the Houston Chronicle come out and said, it's a wrap. Well, now the accusers are going after the NFL and Roger Goodell because it seems that their virtue signaling, as brave and stunning and courageous as it is, may have worked themselves into a really ugly spot that makes them look incredibly bad. Deshaun Watson accusers frustrated. The NFL and Roger Goodell have failed me. Now, it should be noted before we get into this, you thought Roger Goodell and the NFL, you know, the National Felon League, had learned its lesson after Ray Rice and that video surfaced, and after Greg Hardy, well, they instituted the personal conduct policy. Uh, they created an exempt list so somebody can be suspended and put on it or even placed on it while an investigation is being done. For whatever reason, the NFL has not put Watson on at least the exempt list or the, the commissioner's list, as they call it, it's not even a suspension. It's just a get him out of the way for the optics of the league, and they haven't even done that yet. 22 women have accused Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson of misconduct. I will be cleaning some of this up for the sake of the YouTubers. Two of the accusers, Lauren Baxley and Ashley Soley, met with reporters from Sports Illustrated this week to explain their frustrations with the way the NFL has handled the investigation in the Watson. I've heard they've done very little, to be honest with you. Baxley and Solas told Jenny Varentis that they believe the NFL was, quote, patronizing and victim-blaming, whoa, them during their interviews with league investigators. And honestly, I think the NFL has only really talked to a couple of these women what the NFL is doing as far as dragging their feet, they're trying to hope that what they're trying to do is to see if Deshaun Watson will settle this out of court. The problem with that is supposedly their new policies are supposed to still hammer the athlete, even if they do settle out of court. This woman asked me what I was wearing, which honestly really pissed me off, Sola says. She explained that there's something that she has to ask, which I don't believe at all. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be wearing that, I, that would suggest that I don't want you to put your blank on my hand. Do I need to wear a turtleneck? Meanwhile, Baxley says the NFL has actively looked for weaknesses in her story. My forensic interview was very respectful and trauma-informed, Baxley says. They let me speak uninterrupted, Whereas Lisa Frill and the NFL investigator, they would cut me off. They would question things. They would circle back. So in other words, the actual criminal system is doing a much better job here than the NFL, it seems. They were trying to trip me up. They didn't. 
but they were really looking at weaknesses that they thought they could exploit. Sports Illustrated adds that the NFL declined to make Lisa Frill and Jennifer Gaffney the league's investigators available for interview. Baxley claims the NFL has failed her and her fellow accusers by allowing Watson to participate in training camp. The, I'm going to tell you, it looks incredibly bad. The optics looks bad right now. Now you've got Watson, by the way, throwing fits because the media is following him around. Well, dude, you are a story right now. You're a half a second away from being Michael Vick and dog killing, okay? So nobody feels bad that the media is following you around. I don't give a damn. The NFL recently made it clear that they were taking a stand against women and survivors of when they stated that Watson would be able to participate in team activities without restrictions, despite the dozens of women whose experiences and testimonies prove pattern of mental and abuse. I'm trying to clean this up. Watson deserves a fair day in court. But the NFL and Roger Goodell have failed me, and they have failed the other women by choosing inaction. Baxley makes a good point. Under the normal circumstances, the NFL usually allows subjects of investigations to take part in training camp while the league assesses it op- its options. However, Watson's presence at training camp is a distraction to everyone. It serves no purpose. Yeah, because he's trying to get out by way of a trade. So it doesn't make sense for him to be out there on the field at all. With so many uncertainties regarding the investigation and his status with the team, Watson has taken minimal reps, and there's awkwardness of having a player accused of misconduct by 22 women just hang around. All the national attention has gotten to Watson, who is even lashing out at the media. Okay, let me stop right there. This thing has not gotten nearly the attention that it should be getting, and I got to just be real. There's some privilege going on here. Okay, Clay Travis called it out maybe two months ago. But under the circumstances of everything that's going on socially, it seems the media doesn't want to, they don't want to touch this with a 20-foot pole. Can anybody remember Sal Palatonio being, staking out the entire place when uh, Ray Rice happened, when Michael Vick happened, And Greg Hardy was, I mean, that's all ESPN talked about. Deshaun Watson is getting a complete pass here. Both Baxley and Solis discussed their experiences with Watson with Sports Illustrated, and their stories are remarkably similar. First, Watson reached out to both women on Instagram to book massage appointments. Then during a scheduled massage, Watson began directing them to private areas. Watson allegedly exposed himself to her after asking Solis to work on his abdominal, abdomen, I'm sorry. When Solis was asked Watson to readjust himself, he reportedly uh, moved himself to one of uh, his private parts. Because the sports media is afraid to criticize a black athlete too harshly in 2021, the NFL is under no pressure to address these accusations so it continues. So somebody, they just come out and said this. Oh, that was Bobby Burak from OutKick. Okay. Uh, who's now got stories on Fox News. Interesting. Uh, so that's, that's the thing. Bobby just called it out. In 2021, if you're a black athlete, you seem to be getting to skate by. And the NFL is exploiting this. They are taking advantage of the current climate in this country, so Deshaun Watson can get a pass right now. But what's funny is, so I guess race takes precedent now over women, gender, uh, misconduct of a very, very vulgar nature. Let's just call it like that. This makes the NFL look incredibly bad. I mean, Deshaun Watson's never playing another down for the Texans. Why is he allowed to be in training camp right now? Why hasn't Goodell stepped in and yanked him over to the personal conduct uh, 
Per, it, he doesn't even have to put him on the conduct list. Put him on the commissioner exempt list. There's multiple lists out there, by the way, he could be put on. Until this is over. Until this is investigated. By the way, there's timelines out there. Uh, supposedly, the, the actual legal system won't start giving depositions to a lot of these women until September. Deshaun Watson has a deposition planned, theoretically. And uh, after the Super Bowl in February, that's kind of a long way off. And then, look, even if he's put on the list, any one of the NFL list, if he's suspended by the NFL, he won't get time served for having been on that list. It's two separate things. So let's say they step in and say, we're going to put him on the list for the last nine games of the year, and then they suspend him next year. He doesn't get nine games worth of credit. No, he's still suspended for the entire next year. Okay. Uh, the NFL looks terrible because it's it's clear the NFL is woke, but it's selectively woke now. Interesting. Interesting. And where is the mainstream media after Me, Me Too? Me Too just took, decided to take a vacation because of race? Is that what's happened here? Because that's what it looks like. Hypocrisy at its at at its at its best. And once again, something involving extreme misconduct, Roger Goodell is falling on his ass again. Just like he did with Greg Hardy, just like he did with Ray Rice. That blew up in his face. This is gonna blow up in his face as well. The NFL looks terrible in this Deshaun Watson thing. They look really bad. Tell me what you think, black and white sports fans. Peace, I'm out. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.